Myofluid fluid simulations are a perfect way to simulate gaseous or vapor-like effects, but they tend to be expensive in terms of processing. They take a long time to calculate and render, and combining multiple fluid simulations in a single animation can be nearly impossible to pull off when computing resources are limited. So take for example this animation I created that illustrates the firing mechanism of the stinging cells in a coral tentacle. I used a fluid simulation to represent the dispersal of venom as the syringe-like mechanism penetrates the skin of the coral's prey. The tentacles are lined with these cells, and I really wanted to show multiple cells firing at once in a cross-section. However, time and computing resources were limited, so I needed to devise a solution that was practical. For this reason, I decided to use Maya fluids, but I used a 2D container, which calculates a bit faster than 3D containers. So I designed the shot so that a cross-section of the cells would be viewed from the side. This allowed me to take advantage of using a 2D fluid container when showing multiple simulations, since the shot itself is going to be somewhat from an orthographic view. It's also a bit easier to get detailed fluid motion to render well using 2D containers than it is with 3D containers. And I thought the detailed motion of the fluid, while not necessarily a completely physically correct representation at the scale of individual cells, does look really nice and conveys a sense of uh, venom being injected. So it's a bit of a visual metaphor, but I think it works well enough to help tell the story of the biological processes and mechanisms of the coral stinging cells. So the technique I devised in the end involves creating a 2D fluid simulation, rendering just the fluids with a geometry mask from a side view as a long sequence of images, and then using this image sequence as cards in an After Effects composition. So these sequences of venom injection fluids were placed as animated layers above a render of the animated geometry. And I also took advantage of some interesting fluid emission techniques in order to get this particular behavior. I used the geometry of the cell itself as an emitter, and I combined that with using an end particle as an emitter. It was kind of an experiment on my part, but I think it worked pretty well. In the next few sections, I'll describe the process in detail.